You've done a lot of research on this issue of uh, opiate addiction, drug mm -hmm. addiction. Uh, what I mean, give me some of your aha moments of, of what you discovered. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, for, um, one thing that really just inspires my passion about this is recognizing that I don't, I mean, the people that struggle with addiction, so let me back up. So I think addiction is a, it's a maladaptive coping mechanism, and it's something that all humans struggle with in some form or fashion. Unfortunately, for some people, their addictions manifest as like an opioid addiction or severe alcoholism or an addiction to gambling or sex or online, uh, you know, many ways that, that we think of more traditionally as these addictions because of the consequences that they have. But every human being, addiction is just a way to cope with or deal with some kind of uncomfort in, uh, in us or some kind of pain like in us. Like smoking. That's right. Yeah, so smoking could be one. But then other people, I mean, there's, there's, there's noble addictions like workaholism. I mean, many people, they, they My continue wife to... My accuses me of that all the time, and I think there's yeah. something to be said about that. Certainly, so. and, you know, and it's... And, it can always come from a good. It can come from a good place. There's some that you know. There's some things like that. It can, if it's a severe passion or something that we're really involved in, it can come. It, it brings a lot of good into our life, and it can come from a good place, so long as we're not using it to escape something, or so long as we're not using it to ignore or avoid something that's going wrong in our life. Uh, then a lot of positive can come from that. But I think every human being, we find some way to escape or avoid or numb. For some people, they have a sweet tooth. For some people, they like to do some shopping, and maybe they have enough income, and it's not something that, that, um, that really unravels their life. But for some unfortunate few, either their coping mechanisms weren't good enough when they face the challenges, their struggles, or the traumas in their life to cope with them in a more natural way or in a less destructive way, or the amount of pain or trauma that they experienced was so severe that nothing else could help alleviate that pain or that discomfort that they that they experience. So when I reali when I realized that that it's not it's not an addict issue, a non-addict issue. I mean, we're all human beings. We're all dealing with uh, this journey of life in a similar way. And whether somebody is a severe addict or an opioid addict or not, it's not a difference of kind. It's not a difference of type of person. It's just a difference of degree to which they're using something external to so avoid like, or escape. I know a lot of people used to think that drug addicts were weak-minded, mm -hmm. they didn't have any discipline, they were just sorry humans. Yes, uh, sir. And your research suggests otherwise, it's just the way that they cope with their problems, right? That's right. I mean, we all, all have our that's right. issues, just like you said. And it's all about where they are in their life. So I believe that addiction is, is correlated to how much of potential we're living into. So I, I refer to it as realized potential. You know, we all have unlimited amounts of potential to actually succeed or be um, uh, be happy, be fulfilled, make a contribution. But when we face challenges in our life and it affects our self-esteem or our self-efficacy, it affects the tools and the resource and our coping mechanism, the ability to show up because of the struggles that we face, that affects how much of our true potential we express or we live into. And when that gets low enough because of the challenges that you face, because of the pains, because of the hurt, or because of the environment that you grew up in, you just didn't develop the strong enough coping mechanisms, it gets you down to a place where you seek external stimuli to avoid or escape or numb the pain uh, that, you're, that you're in. A, a lot of the people I work with, the biggest pain that they have is they don't have enough meaning and purpose in their life. So they use substances or behaviors or anything that's detracting from their life to just avoid and escape that fact. I mean, there was a period in my life where I just didn't have any meaning. I didn't know what I, you know, I, I knew I wanted to do something. I knew what I wanted to make a contribution, but I didn't feel like I was doing it. And that left a tremendous void inside of me. And I had a, you know, a long, a long chapter in my life where I was running off and drinking as much as I could any chance I got because for a big part of it, trying to fill that void that I felt. So when, so that could be one reason that somebody has that tremendous amount of pain. It's not always because you come from a traumatic background or, you know, we think PTSD and we correlate that with, with addiction. Okay, that, that, that's certainly one cause of it, but there's a lot of other reasons. Some people just aren't given the, given the idea, given the roadmap, given the counseling or whatever to help them live into their potential and find something that's really meaningful. So, so many different sources of pain and many different ways to uh, escape that, and unfortunately, some have many more drastic consequences. But back to your point about being weak-minded, I mean, if you think that somebody is, you know, that another thing that really drew me into this is just the hypocrisy around addiction. So many people will judge or shame somebody who is an alcoholic or an opioid addict and completely ignore the fact that they're $50,000 in credit card debt or they're, you know, 110 pounds overweight. And it's like, you know, you have behaviors that are affecting we you. We all have our problems. That's right. And if you're going to say that somebody is weak-minded because they can't put down some opioids or crystal meth or alcohol long enough to, you know, to move beyond that, well, I mean, look at yourself. Let's, let's kind of come with an understanding and with judge compassion. Judge not, lest ye be judged. That's right, exactly. Right. So the Bible says that, and it's 
Absolutely true. Yeah, let's look at our own selves and then and and, and use that to fuel compassion and understanding for somebody else because it's only through compassion. Uh, uh, one of the biggest reasons for addiction, one of the biggest uh, f factors that fuels addiction is lack of connection, lack of having meaningful bonds, nurturing bonds with people. Uh, we feel, you know, we're in a society where we're more connected to other people but less, you know, less socially, you know, less... Uh, the connections that we have are much less nurturing because they're through Facebook or through email. Um, but those nurturing connections that we need to feel loved and accepted, that's what, that's what helps people avoid that temptation or avoid those, those behaviors. So when somebody is judged, when an addict or somebody that's struggling is judged, that only severs that connection even more. It only takes away more of what they need to nurture themselves to back to a healthy place. So that's why I always suggest look at our faults, look at our, the ways that we are doing things and, and use that to fuel compassion or understanding. Hold that thought. We're going to have to take a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Stick around. We've got a really good program for you today.